Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I'm bringing you a Kirishima guest story. It's been a while since we had a Kirishima story. Let me actually check real quick when the last time was. It's gonna take one little second. It has been three weeks, oh my goodness! Three weeks since the last Kirishima fanfiction. Now, that is something that changes right now. I hope you enjoy it. I worked like two hours on it, maybe even three. Nah, I'm joking, it was just two. But I hope you still enjoy it. But before we dive right into it, here is my typical intro. Please watch the video until the end, like or dislike it, and comment your favorite part of the video down below. And, uh... Please share it around. Doing these things is the best way to indirectly support me because this way YouTube will pay me just a little bit more. However, if you prefer to be a little bit more direct, there's a Patreon link and a merch store link right in the description. Now, please enjoy the show. You sniffled. This had been the third time in a row, and the fourth time you had done it in the past twenty minutes. While Mr. Aizawa hasn't said anything yet, you could see it in his eyes. The man was about to lecture you. This morning you had awoken with a running nose, and slightly too high body temperature than was normal for you. You could have stayed in your dorm if it wasn't for an important test that would come in the next two days. If you missed this test, as I would have had to set up an entirely new one just for you to complete after you were healed up. And you just simply couldn't allow this to happen. The last time something like that had happened was with Mineta. The boy had been brought to tears with the personalized test. You sniffled again, this time getting the attention of another classmate, Ida. The blue-haired boy stared at you, giving you the stink eye. There was a twitch in his hand. He was about to raise it. Probably demand you be sent to the nurse. You shook your head feverishly, the irony slipping your fingers. After a few seconds, he gave a silent sigh and returned his attention to the teacher. He, on the other hand, gulped out of the tension, only to feel a seething pain in your throat, and you suppressed a groan. Your entire body was screaming at you to stop and get some help, to lie down, take a break. After a teacher was done writing on the chalkboard, he quietly walked back to his desk and went through his notes. Today's lecture had to be quiet as he was correcting essays from class 1b. While copying the text on the board, you glanced up at the clock. 30 minutes. You'd only spent 15 minutes in class so far. It actually felt much longer. The sickness was making you lose your grip on time. Without looking up from his work, Aizawa spoke up. You do realize how responsible it is to come to class while sick. You can spread it. Probably already did. You knew he meant you. I can't kick you up because Nezo said I should stop sending kids back to real life for minor things. I'm not going to point my finger at you now. After the lesson, go to the nurse. And if I see you in school again today, I will give you detention for a month once you're cured. That hurt your soul. Whispering now started among your peers. But no one seemed to look at you with the exception of Ida, who was having a shit-eating grin on his face while working. You rolled your eyes. Bootlicker. You cursed silently. The rest of the class went by without any more incidents. 
With your head hung low, you packed your things before rushing into the nurse's office, where no one was looking. You were so in thought that you didn't see the person waiting in front of the office, and you bumped your head right into them, sending you down to the ground with them. Ow! You cried out. You were lying on something soft, something that moved. And it took you a minute to realize you had tumbled on top of someone. You shrieked and jumped back. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry! You desperately hoped you didn't bump into Mineta or his scary girlfriend. Or that piece of shit from Plasma B. Hey, it's fine. And that was Kirishima's voice. You raised your head. The redhead was sitting on the ground, rubbing the back of his head. <laughs> I mean, I can take it. <laughs> he gave a hearty laugh, and you blushed. So, he said after both of you stood up straight. Why are you in front of the nurse's office? He asked, still with his confident smile. And you were still blushing. Aizawa, you mumbled. Ah, so he didn't mean me. Uh, or at least just me. Yuru gave Kirishima a confused look. He didn't seem sick to you. My throat really hurts, and because of that, honestly, I haven't eaten yet. Just can't swallow. And I'm not sure if he noticed this when we had physical training earlier. Poor guy, you thought. But the throat inflammation wasn't contagious, was it? What you got? You shuddered. It was embarrassing, especially after Aizawa had pointed out that you were basically a biohazard. F fever and sniffles. You stuttered. His facial expression changed from happy to concerned. Without saying another word, he opened the door. Ladies first, he said. This is what you were afraid of. Concern. It made everyone treat you like you were an egg. Recovery girls seem to have been waiting for you already. There you are. I've prepared a bed for you, she said while looking sternly at you. Next time, please call me and don't leave your dorm. Now, I can send you out of the infirmary until I make sure that you don't make people sick around you. Then she noticed Kirishima. Uh, the boy? she asked. I uh, thought Aizawa had met me when he said go to the infirmary. He chuckled awkwardly, and the recovery girl sighed. Fine, take the other bed. I will first give her... She pointed at you. Some medicine, then I'll be right by your side. Recovery girl gave you some undescript pills and a liquid medicine that tasted like bubblegum, before gently closing the bed's curtains. Immediately you felt sleepy. Probably the medicine. From the other side you could hear Kirishima raspily say, Ah, uh, and recovery girl shrieked. In all my years, I have rarely seen such a swollen throat. No, 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 no. You stay here too. And how the hell can you still talk normally with that? Kirishima chuckled. Guess I have a talent. And then you fell asleep. Your fever dreams weren't pretty. Shapeless shadows curled all around you. There was screaming. Screaming everywhere. You felt hunted, but were unable to move. Cold hands snaked around your body and tightened around your throat. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't scream. 
Hot tears ran down your face as the unseen creature strangled you, gasping for precious air. You managed to whimper, but that only made the grip tighter around your throat. With your heart racing up your spine, you looked down at the monster. The thing was the physical embodiment of fear and anxiety. Its mouth cracked into a wide smile, eyes glowing with murderous intent. You squeaked, desperately staring into the vast pool of twisting shadows and screams. The end approached. And then you finally woke. Cold sweat running down your face, you looked around yourself. It was pitch black. But you could tell you were still in the infirmary. Finally, you looked to your left. Kirishima was sitting on his bed, a light on a nightstand illuminating his face. You all right? He asked. You whimpered, still feeling the claws around your neck. Uh, you were crying in your sleep, so I thought I'd better wake you up. That was strangely sweet of him. He then smiled and laid back down. What time is it? You asked after getting your bearings. 2 a.m. Your eyes widened. You had slept the entire day away. How are you feeling? Your heart was still racing from your nightmare. I don't know. You chuckled sadly. Like crap? Kyushima gave you an amused hum as an answer. So, why did you still come to school while well, you should have stayed in bed? Now, you probably use a day or more. Or worse, you could have hurt yourself during training. You looked over at him. Since when was he your therapist? The test? You mumbled. Kishima laughed and then grabbed his throat. Still hurt? He rolled his eyes. <laughs> Captain Obvious? He chuckled. What about you? He sighed. I guess... I just didn't see it as a big issue. You raised an eyebrow. Humans are incredibly good at recovering and getting used to things, but the way we recover basically disables us for at least a day, and worst case, a month, maybe longer. Some say that's proof of our fragility. He smiled. Idiots, I say. We can recover from a bullet wound. No sweat. Have you seen those videos on the internet where people just tank pistol shots? You smiled. Kishima, I think you're about to start rambling. He huffed. <laughs> My point is, if there are people who can survive multiple shots in a chest, who am I to lie down when my throat hurts a little? You lie back down, thinking. I'd say that's wrong thing, you said. As you said, Humans can recover from much. It's just the time it takes to recover from it. You said it yourself. How long does it take for a person to recover from bullet wounds? And how long from, as you put it, a little throat pain? You looked over at him and smiled. I think you just wanted to feel like a big manly boy, Ejiro. Coming to school despite being sick. He gave a hearty laugh, and then groaned when the pain got too much. Yeah, you're right. You two went silent for a moment before you asked. Wait, does this count as a slumber party? 
He scratched his chin. Nothing for that. We need to be at least three or more people. You bit your lower lip. Then what is this? He furrowed his brows. Two friends sleeping together in the same room while being sick, tired, and dragged out of their minds. He went quiet until... This might be my delirium, but this sounds... He chuckled. <laughs> Kinda hot. You blushed. I was going to say romantic, you dork. He grinned. Stop trying to make me laugh, seriously. Well, I wasn't really trying. Is it because of your throat? <laughs> God, you're adorable, but yeah, that's one of the reasons. You laid down on your side and looked at him. What are the others? He turned towards you. Well, I think I'm trying to not fall in love with you. Dork. Such an absolute dork, you thought. Why are you blushing? He teased. The fever, you interjected way too fast. He smirked. <laughs> How about once we're cured, we go on a date, huh? I'll pay. You buried your head under the blanket. Idiot! You squeaked. 